everyone. We're going to talk about Bean Validation 1.1, which is really part of Java E7 and the next evolution of Bean Validation 1.0. So my name is Emmanuel Bernard, and I work for Red Hat. And I've been part of the Hibernate team for quite a while, and moving on to more you know, data-oriented projects down the road. And I've also heavily worked in the JCP. And in particular for, for today, I'm the spec lead of Bean Validation. So first of all, Bean Validation 1.1 has, has had two focus. One was to really start from the version 1.0, which was a bit conservative, which, you know, that was our first implementation, and we wanted to be safe on that side. Version 1.1, we really complemented the existing features, added, a, you know, a few extra availability here and there, and fixed a few bugs. And the other branch was really to explore uh, validating not only properties of objects, but go beyond that. And of course, you know, that's part of Java E7, so we worked hard to improve the integration between our specification and the other specifications. All of that to get a very nice and friendly way to write constraints and increase your, your productivity. I really picked up a couple of features that I really find interesting and significant in 1.1. First of all, uh, it's a non-feature, but the specification has been done entirely in the open. The website is open source, the spec is open source, the reference implementation is open source, the TCK is open source, and we did all the work in the open. So you can, first of all, help us contribute to the next version. If you don't have time to do that, you can go back and see all the discussion we've had on the various features and understand why we did something. We're going to talk about dependency injection and specifically about how we have integrated CDI and bin validation 1.1. And then we're going to talk about the big feature, which is method validation, so validating parameters, return values of methods. As an extension to that, we're going to talk about how we integrated JAXRS and use bin validation as the validation framework for JAXRS. And finally, it's kind of a bonus feature. We've added much more powerful error messages uh, using EL expressions. So dependency injection. We initially had a very basic integration between CDI and bin validation in version 1.0, but we wanted to go a bit beyond that. With version 1.1, every bin validation component that is somewhat customizable and available, we, we delegate the lifecycle management to CDI. The bonus is that each of these components can actually use the CDI features like injections, decorators, and stuff like that. And this is especially useful for people writing their own constraints. Remember, bin validation lets you write your own custom constraints very easily. It's actually uh, encouraged. So when you write your constraint validator implementation, this is actually a CDI bean, and you can make use of CDI features. If you look down on the example, you will see it's an actual constraint validator implementation that injects zip code checker service that is doing some heavy lifting. And in the is valid method, we actually use this component to um, execute what we want to do. Next is a, really the big signature feature of bin validation 1.1, and it's about method and constructor validations. It's really about expressing the constraints you want to apply on parameters of a constructor or a method, and the constraints you want to apply on the return value of constructor, which is the created instance in this case, or on the method, the, the return value of the method. And bin validation with Java E7 will do the work of intercepting the call to the method, validate the parameters. If everything goes well, that's good. Then we go and execute the body of the method. Then we return the value. When the value is returned, we validate the return value. And if everything is fine, then we return the value to the client calling that method. If for some reason one of the parameters is invalid or the return value is invalid, then that's where bin validation will create an exception, get the list of constraint violation, and return this validation exception to the client. And it's really ideal to create the constraint logic of your business method. So the business method, the core of it, will actually do the business logic, but then all the pre-validation will be done by bin validation in a declarative way. And that's what we see in this example. If you look at the top, there is a class client which injects an account service, and then we use this service. We literally call create user. And when we call create user, first of all, bin, valida bin validation is kicked in, and we validate the parameters. And then we go and execute the create user 
method core, and then we go back and validate the return value. If we look at create user, how it's declared, then we have a couple of parameters, username, first name, last name, home, etc. Username must never be empty. The address should be a valid object, so all the constraints that are inside address should be valid, right? The getters, let's say uh, the street address should not be null, those kind of information. The string email, the parameter email, should A, not be null, and B, should be an email. So it's very declarative, very easy to read, and then you can focus the core of your method does not handle parameter validation, just do the core of your business method. And if you want to validate the return value, you just put the constraint on the method itself. So in this case, the user returned by create user should not be null. Really, method validation is a feature we wanted to do from the get-go, but it also was heavily influenced by the need of, for JAXRS validation. So JAXRS could have created their own validation framework and their own way to validate things, but instead they worked with us, uh, the bin validation expert group, to make sure to reuse bin validation, the same logic, the same semantic, etc., inside JAXRS. So when you want to validate a JAXRS resource, you just apply bin validation constraint on it, and the JAXRS implementation will delegate the validation to bin validation. So if you're familiar with bin validation 1.0, then it seems very logical, and that's really what we wanted to achieve. So in our example, we have a user resource assigned to a given path. Where when we post to this path, then the register method is called. And we make sure that the form param first name is not empty and the form param last name is not empty the email is actually an email and not null. If that's the case, that's good. Then we go and valid execute the register method. But if there is validation constraint somewhere here, then bin validation raises the validation exception, and JAXRS really looks at this exception and transforms it into an HTTP error code, right? So the client, which is an HTTP client, will actually receive the right HTTP error code. In this case, that would be a 400 because you, the client, didn't provide the right and the expected parameters to the logic. That's a bonus uh, feature I, I described a bit earlier. I really like this one because to create a very small improvement on one of the features, we either could have done something quite crappy or we could have taken a step back and think about how to achieve it properly, and that's what we did for that. And we came up with a very useful and powerful feature. The error message, which is you know, localized and externalizable and so on, can now also be an expression language. So instead of being a simple string with a couple of interpolations, then here you can really have more powerful you know, executions in, in here. In this case, the decimal max has an inclusive flag to say whether or not the boundary is included or not. And depending on that, the error message should be different, and that's how we achieved that. The expression language has access to the constraint parameters, the value of the constraint that you put in it, the invalid value as well, so you can really have a very complete error message. And finally, we expose literally string.format to let you format the parameters. Let's say you have a number and you want to format it with two decimal points you know, after the dot. You can do that very easily. Let me do a summary of what we have seen. Bin validation 1.0 started as a way to offer constraint validation for Java Bean and especially for the properties of those Java Beans. Beyond that, with Bin validation 1.1, by offering not only property validation but also method and constructor validation. So you can literally put validation logic at some boundaries of your system. And we worked hard to make it a very natural integration between bin validation and the rest of the Java E7 ecosystems. We worked hard to make a very nice reuse of CDI so that you really play in the same programmatic model that CDI exposes instead of us having our own. Then we have integrated into new specifications like JAXRS to make sure to validate resources the way you would have applied constraint on a regular bin validation bin. And finally, that's from bin validation 1.0, but we have a very nice JPA integration. So every time you save or update an entity inside the database, then we go and make sure it's valid to not put incorrect data in, into your database. And likewise, in JSF, when you populate from a form when you populate a bin. I mean, if the bin is constrained, if the property is constrained, then we look at it and apply the constraint on it. And if it's invalid, we JSF return the error message to the user in a very meaningful way. If I had to uh, 
to use a catchphrase, bin validation is about constrain once and validate everywhere. You define the constraints on the domain model that you're using, and then you let all the other JSRs and even the other frameworks validate the logic at the right life cycle. Oh, hey, I'm about to pass this object that probably should be valid into the database. Let's go and validate that. Of course, you can call bin validation imperatively to validate a given object, an object graph. But the key for us, the success for us, is for you not to have to do that. Just declare the constraints, and the Java E7 ecosystem will declaratively validate everything for you. That was really a, a quick overview to get you interested into bin validation. If you want to know more, just go to binvalidation.org. You will see the spec, of course, the ARI, the TCK, and everything. You will see news. And if you have any questions, please ask us, and we'll be happy to help you. And of course, bin validation 1.1 is part of Java E7. If you want to join the game, go to oracle.com slash Java E, and you'll get access to, you know, the Glassfish implementation. And since I'm from JBoss slash Red Hat, I'll also point out that the JBoss application server will also have a Java E7 compliant implementation uh, very quickly, end of the summer, something like that. The name of the project is Widefly. It's a, the new rename of JBoss AS. So have a look at that, too. Well, thanks for being with me and uh, taking the time to learn about bin validation, and see you next time.